The gospel for this Sunday is taken from the fourth chapter of St. Luke. In fact, it's the concluding verses. And please remain seated. And, uh, and then we're going to sing the song, The Spirit of the Lord is Upon Me, as I get ready to preach the sermon today. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught there in the synagogue every Sunday or every Sabbath day. There, too, the people were amazed at his teaching, for he spoke with authority. Once when he was in the synagogue, a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, began shouting at Jesus, Go away! Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. Jesus cut him short. Be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then it came out of him without hurting him further. Amazed, the people exclaimed, what authority and power this man's words possess. Even evil spirits obey him, and they flee at his command. And the news about Jesus spread through every village in the entire region. Now, after leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. So standing at her bedside, Jesus rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she got up at once, and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out at his command shouting, You are the Son of God! But because they knew he was the Messiah, he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. Early the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The crowd searched everywhere for him, and when they finally found him, they begged him not to leave. But Jesus replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too, because that is why I was sent. So he continued to travel around, preaching in synagogues throughout Judea. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Again, you know the song, and I ask you to, and invite you to join me in singing it through two times as a prayer as we get ready to hear the sermon. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit. Thank you. 
The sermon for today is taken from the gospel reading where we hear these words. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught there in the synagogue every Sabbath day. O oh, Holy Spirit, you have kept for us this word of God, which is living and active, and it reminds us and teaches us about the life of Jesus. Help us this morning not only to hear about his life and what he did, but at the same time in our time, in our context, celebrate Jesus who's here doing the same work. For he is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow. Amen. Luke chapter 4, it's uh, 47 verses long and it's easily divided into two parts. Verses 1 to 21 talks about Jesus' event at his hometown synagogue. We would know it as a church, but he came to his very own hometown synagogue and that's the first part. And the second part starts at verse you know, 31 where it says, and then he went to Capernaum and there he entered into the synagogue and did the very same thing that he did in Nazareth. Two different congregations, two different sets of people hearing Jesus speak the same word, doing the same teaching. And today as I uh, preach to us, just a simple question, what's your response going to be? He is here. He has, he's doing the very same ministry that he did in Nazareth and Capernaum. He's doing here at Grace. And what is your response to his work today? Got that? You know where we're going. So first of all, when he came to Nazareth, you know, he came with his family. His, it's his hometown congregation. And it says that one of the attendants handed him the book of Isaiah, the scroll. He opened it up to Isaiah chapter, I think it was 61, and he said, because the spirit of the Lord is upon me, it, the very words of the song that we just sang. And then he said he rolled up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant, and then he said to the people, today in your hearing, this word of God, this reading is fulfilled in your hearing. And it says, all the people were amazed at his teaching. Now, it sounds like a good start to a ministry, right? It sounds like a good beginning. You know, all the people were on the side of Jesus. All had, let's practice that. All had their thumbs up. Let's try that. You know, we're with you, Jesus. We're going to go with you. And then he did something that literally shook the earth beneath the feet of the people. He said to them in his hometown congregation, Oh, by the way, I want you all to know that this mercy of God isn't just for the Jewish people. It's actually for everybody. You know, the mercy of the Lord, the Spirit of God, is for men and women, children, it's for Jewish people, it's for Roman citizens, it's for those barbarians out there. And then he told two stories. One of them was about the widow at Zarephath, and the other one was about that Syrian named Naaman, who was blessed by the Lord with the cleansing of his body in the river of Jordan. And you would have thought that his hometown congregation, this little boy that grew up, you know, amongst them, and who's now 30 years old, this little boy who I'm sure some of you 
would say, oh, Mrs. Smith babysat him, you know? This little boy who's now a 30-year-old man, I would have assumed that everyone again would have, ready? And in fact, when he ended this teaching by saying, the mercy of the Lord is for all people, our goal, Jesus says, is to get this out. They changed their thumbs like this, and they went like this. Let's practice that. They went like this, thumbs up, and they did this. Clenched fist. Squeeze it hard. Squeeze it really hard. Because it says the people were so angry. The, the people in the home congregation, the home synagogue of Nazareth, were so angry that they were literally going to take Jesus by the scruff of his, is that right? The scruff of his shirt? The neck, the neck you know? <laughs> Julian, come here. <laughs> Not John, Julian, come here. That they were going to grab Jesus like this, let's pick him up by the, by the belt of his pants and literally run him. And it says that they were going to throw, thanks, Julian, they were literally going to throw him, it says, off a cliff. Imagine, they were going to physically hurt him with, you know, with the desire that they actually wanted him dead. That's what the English translation of Luke 4 says. People who started like this, ended like this, literally going to kill Jesus. Congregation A. It ends, and Jesus walked through them, and guess where he went to? He left Nazareth, his home congregation, and he walked 25 miles literally down the road because Nazareth is up on a hill. It's a little village up on a hill in, in, in Galilee, and he literally walked 25 miles down the road. Literally, got it? Down the road, because guess where he was going? To the lake at Galilee, you know? He's going to the town called Capernaum. And Capernaum is a village along the lake that's called the Sea of Galilee. And in this town, in this village, which is mainly a fishing village, were two business people. Remember them? One was the business operation of James and John and the sons of Zebedee, business group A, and the other business group was Simon and his brother Andrew. You know, the, these brothers, they were fishermen B, they were corporations, they worked hard. And in this text today, we find out that Simon was actually married. Got, get it? That Simon Peter, he had a mother-in-law. Jesus comes to Capernaum, and it says, he again entered into the synagogue. He was handed the scroll, just like in Nazareth, and he began to teach the people, and guess what they did? Let's try it again. Thumbs up. And it says that he did this week after week after week. It was his custom to come to the synagogue in Capernaum and the people welcomed Jesus. They went, you know, they were not like this. Let's all practice something. They were like this. Put them together. They were open to receive. Got it? Why? What's the difference? Which congregation are we? Well, in Capernaum, we hear today Jesus bringing a healing to Simon Peter's mother-in-law. She had a high fever, and he went and he rebuked the fever, and it left her healing one. 
Two, it says that there was someone in the synagogue who had an unclean spirit. And while Jesus was teaching, this particular individual, we don't know his name, stood up and the spirit within him said to Jesus, what are you doing here? You're the son of God, remember? And Jesus had to rebuke that spirit. Event number two. And then at the very end of the reading today, we hear, and many people brought to Jesus those who were sick and those who were possessed again or uh, uh, afflicted by demons and so forth. And it says that he healed them all. Capernaum, unlike Nazareth, who was like this, Capernaum was like this. Which congregation are we? It's a legitimate question. Jesus is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow. He is present in our midst here at Grace Lutheran Church. He is coming to teach us about the kingdom of God is at hand. He's taking time from God's word to instruct our minds so that we know about this kingdom rule, the sovereign rule. He is present bringing healing grace to people. Now, I'm going to address this last one just briefly. And then again, the question is, which congregation are we? And I hope that you will demonstrate to me today that you will do two things. That number one will go like this. We're this way for Jesus. Got that? Let's practice that. And that we will honestly say today, we desire, Lord, never to do this to you, but we desire to do what? Open. To be open. So first of all, healing. Because, you know, today in our service, we're going to provide, you know, during Holy Communion, prayer for those who just want prayer and healing prayer. I want to make it very clear to us this morning that when our ancestors in 1530 Germany, you know, we, they talked about Holy Communion, there was a, a doctrinal dogfight between what Luther was teaching and what the Roman Catholic Church was doing. Luther wanted the people to receive the bread and the wine together. He taught aggressively and assertively that the bread and the wine is for the individual. It wasn't just the bread. And that what you are receiving, which the Roman Catholic Church agrees to, you are receiving the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is everybody with me so far? So that he wanted lay people, you folks, to get both the bread and the wine together because you were being withheld with that. But Luther also said something or taught a teaching that really caught the ear more of you than the ear of his fellow academic colleagues. They wanted to, the uh, academics wanted Luther to debate about who gives the authority to preside at the table. Is it the priest? Is it the pastor? You know? Or can... Pat, you're an elder, right? Can an elder... Just stand up, Pat. Can an elder who's authorized by the congregation give communion? That was the teacher's debate with Luther. Got it? And it's a legitimate debate, and I'm not going to get into that today. But can I take my collar back? <laughs> okay. Lori, this isn't a, a, you know, a clandestine statement again, you know, with worship community. I'm not going to get into that debate. What Luther said to his colleagues was, I don't want to get into that debate with you. It's an old, hard fought. 
What I want to teach is this. Holy communion is actually God's medicine for sin-sick sinners. That caught the ear of you. It didn't catch the ear of the academics, but Luther's voice. Holy communion is God's medicine for you who are sick with sin. You will die. Your body wears out. But this medicine is for you. It's a healing grace for you. Oh, my goodness. The lay people caught this full, full force. Finally, finally, they had a sense that Jesus, who's present, was bringing them a gift that they could relate to, a healing touch, a healing grace, you know, a way in which your body was experiencing in a mysterious way the power of Jesus in you for healing. You know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I find that a refreshing voice today. I find that a meaningful and very helpful voice for me in my life. I stand with you as one whose body is slowly wearing down, who, who wants, who, whose body wants to know that there is a healing grace that can come to me, not because of anything I do, but because it's a gift offered to me. You know, it's freely given. And, you know, at times it's my body that needs healing. At times, you know, I, I get spiritually, I get kind of low and down. It's a healing for that. Emotionally, that Jesus is able to relate to me emotionally, there's a healing for that. In other words, because the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus, who is present at Holy Communion, he mends the brokenhearted. He sets the captive free. He brings healing to those who need healing. That's what Luther taught in 1530. And literally, it caught flame to the lay people. They came in droves, literally in droves, to Holy Communion. And you thought it was because Luther had this great personality, right? No, no, no I thought he could be a really nice guy. He could be a real bore. Lay people came in droves because they knew here at this altar, here at this rail, here at this place, Jesus was present, just like in the text today, bringing a healing ministry to those who come to him. What congregation are we? That's a challenge that I would like to say that I can give an answer to. I sense in my heart as I've pastored with you that we are at this stage in our life like this. Can you practice that? Like this. And we are also at a stage that we're like this. That we want to be open, that we are being open to the real presence of Jesus in letting him be who he is. He is the one in whom and through whom and from whom the Spirit of the Lord comes to bring the good news of God to you. And now, in response, my brothers and sisters, come to Jesus. He's here today as is his custom. And all of God's people said, Amen.